after adding another third round pick, which takes Washington up to three in the NFL draft of 2024. Washington has been linked to a possible trade for Cleveland Browns cornerback Greg Newsom the second. Adam Peters, Michelin star chef and new general manager of the Washington Commanders, has been cooking up quite the rookie campaign as a GM for the home team. We have reached 17 agreements since free agency has started. Tight end Zach Ertz, defensive end Dorrance Armstrong, center Tyler Biotish, linebacker Frankie Louvu, running back Austin Eckler, kicker Brandon McManus, guard Nick Allegretti, defensive end Cleland Farrell, quarterback Marcus Mariota, defensive end Dante Fowler, long snapper Tyler Ott, safety Jeremy Chin, a couple guys of our own in F.A. Obata, Jeremy Reeves and Jamison Crowder, and another two linebackers in the KG veteran future Hall of Famer Bobby Wagner and Anthony Pittman, special teams specialist from the Detroit Lions. That is quite a haul for the first week of free agency. If you didn't think Washington was going to be active in the first wave of free agency, you are to be mistaken. But we've also lost a couple guys, some guys that fans love. Cam Curl inks a deal with the Los Angeles Rams. Kendall Fuller, cornerback, inks a deal with the Miami Dolphins. We've traded Sam Howe to the Seattle Seahawks and Kurt, Curtis Samuel. Kurt Coe got a deal to play with Josh Allen and the Buffalo Bills. Quite the activity for this franchise in week one of free agency. It's never a dull day. Like I was just talking to a fellow content creator. The content literally creates itself for this team right now. And my favorite part about all of this Christmas morning type transactional news is that it is 100% about football. Everything we're talking about on the channel, whether Washington signs a player, releases a player, trades for a player, trades up or down in the draft, it is all about football. Washington can now keep the main thing, the main thing. And Washington fans like myself, we can just be fans of a football team. We don't have to talk about this sideshow circus that has existed here in the last 25 years. And for that, I say, Woosa, hallelujah, we are on to better days. Let's talk about this guy, Greg Newsom, cornerback, six foot cornerback, 190 pounds, lengthy speed guy. Has the length and the speed Dan Quinn seeks in a cornerback. I remember when he came out in 2021, him and his teammate Rashawn Slater were the first ever Northwestern Wildcats to go in the first round of the NFL draft. He was the 26th pick by Andrew Barry and the Cleveland Browns, and he's been very productive and very good for them. I know he just caught his first two interceptions of his career this year. Both of them came in the clutch, by the way. His first career interception was a pick six off Lamar Jackson when they stormed back to beat the Baltimore Ravens in Baltimore in the fourth quarter of that game. His other interception this year came in the fourth quarter against Trevor Lawrence and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Very good company to get your first career picks. But this is a very solid to really good cornerback. And the Cleveland Browns face a conundrum, a log, a log jam at the cornerback position. Denzel Ward already has the bag and the ascension of second year cornerback Martin Emerson Jr. who came in and caught four picks this year opposite Ward forced Greg Newsom to play on the inside this year. Greg Newsom prefers and was drafted to be an outside cornerback. It's where he that's where his expertise lies. But last year he only played 286 snaps on the outside and played over 400 on the inside. He actually voiced his frustration in the offseason about playing on the inside. He played for a mastermind defensive coordinator, Jim Schwartz, and the 2023 Browns defense was historically elite. One of the best defenses of the last 10 to 15 years in this league. Greg Newsom played a big part in that. He showed a lot of positional versatility because he was able to actually succeed in the slot. But he had an interview on a radio show last offseason 
where he actually voiced that he had no interest in playing on the inside. I want to play on the outside. I am an outside cornerback. And you kind of know why he wants to be an outside cornerback. For one part, they get paid significantly more. They get paid almost half as less to play on the inside than on the outside. Because, you know, the NFL has its position caps when it comes to how much you can get paid at a position. A slot corner is going to make about half of what a outside corner is going to make. Here is why Greg Newsom would make sense for Washington to pursue. We just lost our number one cornerback, Kendall Fuller, to the Miami Dolphins in free agency. We've signed a lot of guys. It's time to put some young talent on this roster. Greg Newsom is like getting a draft pick because despite the fact that he's going into his year four season in the NFL, Greg Newsom's 23 years old. He doesn't turn 24 until May. He's going into the season into year four as a 24-year-old fourth-year cornerback. So he has not quite reached his zenith yet. He's nowhere near his peak or his prime. And my guy Jalen was telling me, shout out to the gang, Jalen Morden, sub up to his channel, by the way. He was telling me in the chat yesterday that one of his close relatives is a Dallas fan, but one that actually knows ball, like obsesses over it, follows everything the team does like we do. He said, there's one position you do not have to worry about with Dan Quinn and Joe Witt Jr. It's the cornerback position. They will develop them boys. They will take a fourth or fifth round pick and make him a starter immediately. So when I hear Kime and Bram Weinstein come out and say, Washington is not done making moves yet. And don't be surprised if they get in on the Greg Newsom conversation. That's something that catches my attention. Oh, also want to give credit to my boy, Josh Taylor, JTFB. He was the first one in the Washington hemisphere that linked Greg Newsom to Washington. He tweeted about 72 hours ago that don't be surprised if Washington's name is closely directed with Greg Newsom in the Cleveland Browns. So shout out to my guy for being early on that because even Kime mentioned it now. Josh was on it before everybody else. Sub up to his channel as well, JTFB, providing quality content on here and on the Bleacher Report app. Shout out to the gang. Back to Greg Newsom the second. This is a guy who hasn't reached his peak yet. And with the defensive prowess we have here, Dan, Dan Quinn, Joe Witt Jr., Jason Simmons, and company, we could get a lot out of Greg Newsom. What did Washington do this week? We did a pick swap with the Seattle Seahawks for our former quarterback, Sam Howe. We added a third, third round pick. Three picks in the third round. Whatever the last in order of those third round picks is, offer it for Greg Newsom. That and maybe a late round pick in 2025 gets the deal done. This is a guy who's not a free agent, but you're getting a young guy who is going into year four. You could pick up his fifth year option, which is going to be around $13.7 million for your number one cornerback. He comes in, he starts on the outside. You put BSJ or Forbes opposite him. Maybe you put Benjamin St. Juice in the slot and put Forbes opposite him. You have a starting cornerback for the low, but he's a guy you may want to sign and extend because one of the major reasons why he's being shopped right now, their fans don't want to trade him. Cleveland Browns fans do not want any parts of parting ways with Greg Newsom. You're already paying Denzel Ward so much money. Martin Emerson has ascended into a bona fide starting corner as well. You can't pay everybody. Greg Newsom is up next to be paid going into year four. And trust me, Greg Newsom wants his bag. He fired his agent last year and hired Drew Rosenhaus. And if there is one thing I know about Drew Rosenhaus, that boy going to get to his money. Drew Rosenhaus is going to get his clients the bag. He's been doing it since T.O. was in his prime. He's been doing this shit for 30 plus years. Drew Rosenhaus is coming for the bag. Greg Newsom switched from number 20 to number zero last year. The last time we seen him, it was not a good showing. But just like Dan Quinn's last performance with the Cowboys, you cannot play what have you done for me lately and make the last time we seen them a microcosm of what they've put 
out as a body of work so far. But the last time we saw Greg Newsom, the Houston Texans was beating that boy like a motherfucking drum in that playoff game. But C.J. Stroud and them boys, they did that to a lot of guys last year, and they look totally unprepared. You know how good Bobby Slowick in that Houston offense had to have been to make Jim Schwartz in a historically great defense look foolish for an entire playoff game? Well, that happened last time we seen Greg Newsom in a uniform. But this is a good cornerback, and this is a contract that makes sense. This is a guy who fits the profile. 438 ran a 438 coming out, six foot, 190 pounds, good size for a cornerback. And he has yet to reach his peak in this league. He has yet to completely take off, but he's not sorry. He's not bad. He's not even average. He's a good cornerback in this league who is just running into a conundrum of a log jam at his position. They have guys over there. I wouldn't trade him if I was Cleveland because Denzel Ward shows up on that injury report far too often. But Greg Newsom is looking for new surroundings. I know the majority of Washington fans, they're going to say, no, let's just go trade the bag and offer the bag to Legereus Sneed. Love Legereus Sneed. He was a top three corner in this league last year. Despite the fact that Washington still has over $50 million in cap space with all the signings we've made so far. I don't know if we're big fish hunting on that level. This is a big enough fish to fry for Washington because I think Legereus Sneed would cost one of our second round picks in a five-year, 100 million plus type contract. I think we could trade for Greg Newsom for one of our third round picks and give him a reasonable extension if you even give him an extension right away. You don't have to. You can just to get him comfortable and just to seal the deal because I'm sure there is going to be competition for Greg Newsom on the trade market. But you could also just pick up his fifth year option, see how the year plays out and get him taken care of in the offseason. The fifth year option is only $13.7 million, So. This feels like a deal that should get done by the Washington Commanders. I know we were interested in signing Isaac Yadaman. He ended up taking a contract with the San Francisco 49ers. The rich get richer. That is a very good signing for them. You can look at an Xavier Howard. You could possibly shoot your shot for Marshawn Lattimore, which is probably going to cost you a little more for New Orleans. But I like the ceiling and the upside of Greg Newsom Jr. or Greg Newsom II. Four-year corner, still only 23 years old, had a couple picks last year. So there's ball production that does exist. Has the athletic arrogance and personality I love at the cornerback position. And we currently have a need at that position. And that takes another need off the draft board. We would not have to touch the cornerback position early in the draft if you get Greg Newsom, who's like a draft pick because of his age and upside. Also, if we do get Greg Newsom, please wear number zero for Washington because I'm dying to see a number zero in that Washington commander's uniform. Yes, I care about petulant shit like jersey numbers, the whole nine. That's my thing. And speaking of jerseys, as a Washington fan, let me give you a pro tip about jerseys. Put your last name, nickname, first name, whatever name that resonates with you, put your name on the back of a jersey. You want to know why? Because as fans, we were here before these players. We're going to be here after these players. So instead of bitching about buying a jersey and a player leaving in the offseason, maybe just put your name on the back and just rep yourself. Get a good quality. Get a limited or get an elite jersey with your name on the back. If you want another jersey, get another one. Get the other colors. Get the alternate. Get the white. But put your name on the back of the jersey. You're never going to have to worry about it. But let's stick on. Let's stay on topic. Greg Newsom II makes a lot of sense for Washington. I would not be surprised if we heard something about us acquiring him over the weekend. I'm all for it. I love it. And according to John Kime, we're not done making moves yet. What we've done in the tradings of Montez Sweat and Chase Young, the tradings of Sam Howe, and the contracts we've got done in the early parts of the tampering period of free agency is we've allowed ourselves the fluidity the flexibility to let the world be our oyster. We can do whatever we want. We can trade for players elsewhere. We can move up the draft. We can move down the draft. We can do whatever the fuck we desire. And 
I love this type of flexibilities. Adam Peters, keep cooking. We love what you're doing. We love the activity, but most of all, we love the substance of what's being done because I've seen Washington be active before, but this is different. And if you don't see the difference, I don't know what to tell you and stay off the weed. That's all I got for right now. Hell to the Washington Commanders. If you'd like to see Greg Newsom the second as a Washington Commanders cornerback, let me know in the chat. Let me know what type of compensation you think would be required to bring him here to D.C. That's all I got for right now. Hell to the Washington Commanders. Until next time, Commander Rio, out.